All right. So with that, uh, Mr. Igor, uh, V3 Zulu Foxtrot, uh, let's turn the uh, frequency over to you, sir, and uh, go ahead and uh, welcome aboard and uh, Happy New Year to you. And uh, what have you got to tell us? So all yours, sir. Okay. Thank you very much, Al. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, happy New Year. Uh, I would like to uh, propose to your attention a presentation uh, which related to recent operation from the uh, McLean Mountain. Can you see my screen? Okay, good. So at the end uh, of the December, on the December 18 last year, uh, was assigned a RC winter contest. This is like winter national championship. And uh, we have a plans uh, uh, to try to operate during winter season from the uh, top of the McLean. I had uh, some negotiations uh, with Al before this event. Uh, and Al told me it had McLean uh, mountain has some difficulties to operate during winter season because this is like mostly snowing uh, location and uh, snow is coming first on this place and uh, leaving from the Manitoulin, this is last place. And during winter, this is very possible that snow will be a lot and uh, police uh, car which came uh, through this tunnel from the snow time to time is uh, touching snow by uh, mirrors. Uh, by uh, this, uh, by, but uh, uh, by last year, uh, 2021, it was not so bad. Uh, week before of the contest, all snow was melted and it was possible uh, to get to the, uh, to the mountain uh, without any difficulties. First of all, we came to a little current uh, with Patrick. Uh, we bring uh, two antennas uh, for the VHF. Uh, we, uh, we bring two Yagi, 30 elements each. And uh, due to antenna needs to be uh, assembled, uh, uh, we made decision to assemble this uh, at the uh, house of Al. Thank you very much, Al, for your hospitality and for your patient. Uh, so, no, no problem, Igor. And just to add to what Igor is saying, as you can see, this is my kitchen table. We took a blanket and spread it across because these uh, one uh, Igor's was semi-assembled, but the the uh, the beam that Pat brought in, and it's a 13-element beam, and it was cold, even though there was no snow up there. Oh my God, the wind was blowing and it was freezing. And I looked at Pat and Igor and I said, what do you want to do? He says, well, we'll go up the hill and assemble the beam. And I looked at them both and I said, um, trying to put that beam together up on that hill without a proper table or shelter or stuff, our fingers are going to freeze for one and two. Uh, if we dropped one of those little bolts or washers or something in the grass, forget it. It's gone forever. You're never going to find it. So we managed to do it in the warmth of the uh, my living room there and uh, kitchen, and uh, we got it together. So it worked well. So thank you for that, Igor. Uh, back to you. <laughs> yeah. So um, probably in two hours, we assembled a Yagi 30 elements, which... Uh, uh, was arrived from DX Engineering, I guess. Uh, and after that, we came uh, to the top of the mountain. It was very windy. Uh, we was lucky uh, because uh, we did not have any snow, but wind was a lot and temperature also uh, was uh, uh, pretty cold. So uh, we assembled uh, another Yagi. This is uh, also 30 elements Yagi on the uh, four meters towers tower and this is like picture how it was assembled this is like military stick from the aluminum uh, and finally it was installed on the on the top of the mountain approximately the same position like Canada Day contest six months ago uh, and uh, finally we got two VHF stations 
which located on the top. First, this is V3, uh, V3 Zulu Fox truck portable and another V3 RAC operation, which provided by uh, Patrick. So this is his antenna, 13 elements CIG we installed to the fence and Patrick has operated from the car. So this is Patrick operates by CW from the car. Uh, so it was uh, time to time was not too easy to operate because cold wind uh, and we operated only daytime because uh, during nighttime this is not too many contacts and very cold this is better to uh, go downstairs uh, to Al's house. So this is another uh, another beam. This is V3 Zulu Fox. I operated two meters uh, uh, from the uh, top. Uh, this is first antenna, 13 elements. Another antenna was like repeater's antenna, which was installed to the 100 meters tower. This is like 300 meters tower, and the, on the top located this is repeater's antenna. Uh, I have to say that uh, this antenna worked extremely well uh, because height is like 100 meters, 300 meters uh, this is mountain and 100 this is uh, this is tower. Total 400 meters. This is almost half of the kilometer. <laughs> Very big height, and uh, I had contacts across whole Ontario, and when we comparing uh, with Yagi, uh, Yagi was uh, much more slower, like signal. Uh, I turned that antenna to the Elliot Lake, uh, to Espanola, to Sudbury, and everybody told me it had, uh, like, repeater's antenna gave much more gain. So this is my position. I operated from the uh, from the car. I have used it uh, TS2000 uh, Kenwood uh, transceiver, 100 watts. I work at SSB, CW, and FM. So this is during night, like during winter, uh, during evening time, uh, like when darkest came, and this is like GPS telling McLean Mountain. So on the second day, uh, when we came uh, to the top of the mountain, we operated half of the day, approximately at uh, 1 p.m. started snow, it was again windy, cold, and snow has been started. And uh, due to uh, difficult winter condition, uh, we decided uh, to complete our operation. Uh, we operated all together, uh, Patrick, Al, myself. So uh, as far condition was going to, to bed, uh, we decided to remove everything, uh, disassembled antenna, and in six hours uh, before end of the contest, we uh, moved from the from the mountain. This is result of the my operation. It was like 104 QSO on the two meters only. This is new Canadian record, and I'm very thankful for everybody who operated uh, with me on the two meters during this expedition. So. Uh, we tried to operate during winter from the top of the mountain and uh, honestly uh, this is uh, very big challenges um, and uh, during HF operation need uh, much more preparation and uh, we will think how to provide uh, this preparation better some later. So, so this is like uh, all information concerning these expeditions. Uh, if you have any questions, please go ahead. Okay, uh, so I'll, in this case, uh, I'm returning uh, microphone to you. So all yours. Okay, well, thank you uh, so much, uh, Igor. I mean, it was a great... Um, how can I say experience? <laughs> yeah. Indeed, you know, I mean, it, uh, uh, the contesting and, uh, you know, I kind of wondered over the year or over the weeks when we were leading up to this, why you were only putting a two meter antenna up and not, you know, a dipole or stuff to work all the, 
all the various bands. But Igor's intention was to win the two meter aspect right across Canada, and he certainly did that. He blew all records out of the out of the water with it. And uh, thanks to every one of you, because two meter contacts are very very difficult on VHF in the winter time, as most of you know. So by setting up that uh, station up on the hill where he had the height, we also had the added benefit of not only having the 13 element beams between Pat and uh, Igor on horizontal. One of the problems is many of you don't have horizontal uh, antennas. We all have vertical antennas. So I got thinking, well, maybe what we'll do is we'll shut down the repeaters for a 24-hour period, turn them over to uh, Igor to use the antenna, and he was able to interface. We hook up a, a splice, and uh, he was able to transmit off the uh, repeater, which was a 9 dB gain up, you know, 100 meters up the tower. Uh, so, uh, you know, that gave him extra distance and he was able to contact Sudbury, Elliott Lake, the North Shore, all of Manitoulin, out west to Sault Ste. Marie and uh, even to southern Ontario without uh, too much difficulty. And uh, thus, uh, he uh, he got the top score. So he, uh, you know, we've won the... Uh, uh, the contest on VHF. So, you know, that's uh, quite an achievement. It'll be another uh, kudo for the Manitoulin Club. Thank you to Igor for that. And uh, uh, so next year, uh, we're looking at uh, uh, trying it again. Of course, uh, Igor, we wouldn't be able to drive up this Saturday up there. It's, uh, no. <laughs> we've, no. We've got the snow up here now. But, uh, you know, uh the good lords were looking uh, for us there because uh, it had got really warm prior to it and we drove right to the tower site as you could see in some of the pictures there wasn't a speck of snow and when we were starting to tear down on the uh, Sunday that's when the snow started so they said you know the the weather uh, wizards or whatever were saying okay guys you've had enough time up there uh, now I'm sending the snow so it worked out very very well so Thank you for your efforts on that. Any questions uh, from maybe some of you operating from home on VHF or uh, something with the contests? Uh, anybody want to comment on anything or you have any questions for Igor? How much power was he running out there? It was 100 watts. Uh, I have used GS2000 Kenwood, uh, so this is not too much. And uh, I operated across Ontario. Unfortunately, condition was too far to be perfect. Uh, I was expecting that it can be, tropo can be exist, uh, but because uh, the weather was changing and I, it is a very good possibility to get like condition on the VHF by tropo. Unfortunately, during my operation, uh, I was not able to work with Victor Echo 2 or Victor Echo 4, so nothing. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I have seen that uh, Rusty uh, at the evening of the Saturday, on the second day, uh, he was able to operate on the two meters with uh, South Ontario V3S Sugar Mike Alpha, I guess. So Rusty, uh, can you add uh, some your uh, opinion? What is the condition was at the end of the contest on two meters? Rusty? I see he's connected there, but he's probably rusty. Are you listening? That's why you call him rusty. Yeah, yeah. he's rusty. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, sort of listening. Yeah. Okay, uh, Igor had a question for you. Oh, yeah. sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, rusty, I saw it had you at the end of the contest operated V3 Sugar Mike Alpha or Sugar Whiskey Alpha on the two meters. What is your uh, opinion, how's the condition was on two meters at the end of the contest? You worked a no, VP2. You, you, you work it. I saw that you work at Victor Echo 3, Sugar Mike Alpha on two meters. Oh, 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 oh. Do you remember? I don't 
I'm struggling <laughs> to remember that. I don't. I see, I see. A very <laughs> prominent thing in Rusty's history here. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> yeah, brain <laughs> parts are there. You know, more more often than not. Uh, yes. Okay. Anyway, uh, so condition unfortunately was not too good. Uh, like Tropo did not appear, and it was not possible to operate V4, V2. Um, but December, this is not good time for uh, VHF. Uh, however, as far as this is uh, assigned to the end of the December, uh, I was trying to do all my the best for the national championship of Canada uh, for the winter part. So this is like it was like QSO by Ontario only. It was a lot of the fun. Thank you very much uh, to all who called me uh, during this contest. I have a lot of the QSO uh, with uh, Northern Ontario, uh, but uh, so on other provinces I was not able to operate. Yeah, the, some of the uh, some of the difficulties, um, Doug, you asked in regards to power. We were somewhat limited. Uh, unfortunately, uh, up at McLean's Mountain at the tower site that we have there, um, we are plugged into the Ministry of Health uh, building, but we only have one 15 amp uh, plug that we're allotted to uh, to operate all our equipment up there. So when you're looking at drawing um, and transmitting from repeaters, etc., and we've got a number of repeaters, we've got the D-Star, we've got the Asterix node, we've got the RQQ uh, UHF repeater with the uh, IRLP, we have a DMR repeater, uh, multi-mode uh, repeater, plus uh, we've got the... Um, you know, the various power supplies, the computers that are operational for that. So it, uh, just le letting everything sit idle and drawing, we're probably drawing about five to six amps, okay? When an individual repeater keys up, of course, the amperage goes up to eight or nine or ten amps, and then it drops and, and that with it. Having 200 watt rigs plugged into the same issue, plus portable heaters, because it was cold up there, and yes, they were in their cars, but they didn't want to be running their cars 24-7 with the heat. So, you know, they had these little micro furnaces that you could uh, uh, plug in. So we talked about, well, let's take a generator or two up the hill and run the generators. Well, I went to pull my generator out and go figure, you know, uh, the day of, um, I'm finding my carburetors leaking for some unknown reason. We didn't want to take it up there. I mean, the generator was running, but it was dripping coming out. I didn't want to pull a gas and ignition because it was still grass up there. We didn't want to start a fire or whatever the case, so we didn't use the generator. So that's why I unplugged all the repeaters so that the two of them could have a full 15 amp uh, uh, usage of the, uh, Plus the they hydro. Plus use the antennas. I'm sorry? Plus they were able to use the antennas. Yes, yeah, we mentioned that. Yeah, absolutely. And that was the benefit uh, of it. So, I mean, it worked in 100 watts. I mean, I think as... Uh, uh, Igor was mentioning with the uh, tropo uh, fear uh, conditions and and that whether he had a hundred watts or a thousand watts, I don't think would have made, you know, yes, a uh, thousand watts would have made a little different, but very rare are you getting stations with thousand watts on VHF. So, but uh, anyway, it it was a good experiment. We know what we did wrong. We know what we have to do in the future and. Uh, if things improve, of course, it's like the uh, Canada Day contest in July. Uh, every year that we do it, we're learning more and deciding more. And, uh, you know, we didn't use uh, generators in the past between uh, uh, Jeff and myself. Uh, we brought generators up last July and they worked out very, very well. And, uh, you know, so in future we'll we'll know how to do things better and then when the day comes that we can all get together as a group and have established stations up there kind of like a field day operation then uh, that'll work uh, pretty good too so so yeah 
uh, good ex exper experiments, and uh, I was quite pleased to be in a uh, part of it. And uh, again, thank you to those stations that made the contact uh, with it. So you'll probably see uh, uh, a bit of information in uh, the upcoming TCAs about the uh, the winter winter contest on on that. So. Certainly, yeah. Manitoulin is getting a name for it. So there you go. Sorry. Who I'd, was, uh... I'd like to uh, thank Igor for his uh, help with, uh, I'm not very proficient when it comes to the logging with the N1MM or whatever that is, they go like that. And Igor here bailed me out <laughs> mm -hmm. and uh, managed to get that all straight. So we got the points for it. So even though that wasn't a, a big point Thing. I guess it's all contributing to uh, what he was doing. So Igor, I thank you very much for all your help and assistance for uh, getting my logs straight <laughs> so that uh, they were able to go through and I heard back from RAC and uh, everything was okay there. So that was good. Thank you. Okay, anytime, Doc. Yeah, we, all, we also had the ability, it was a last minute thing, I was able to uh, obtain the RAC uh, call sign, the VA3 RAC, but we were primarily using uh, Igor's uh, for the VHF uh, contesting his call sign and that with it, but we did have the ability and he did use that periodically up there on uh, on VHF and then he came back to my uh, QTH and right behind me here uh, he did operate but we found that the propagation uh, uh, on uh, Friday night late wasn't uh, very good on uh, on uh, 80 or 40 meters or, or that so there were only a few contacts and then I did a few contacts during the day using rack call sign on Saturday but uh, uh, contacted a couple other provinces with the RAC uh, call sign just to get the points, but how yeah, did that work so, out? How does uh, that work? And you are using uh, RAC, and yep. then Igor was using ZF slash P, but is that all combined into the one station? No, this is a different, a different no. stations. Yeah. Okay, well, they're separate stations, all right. Yeah. 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 So well, we're not going to win too, too much. Maybe in the, uh, you know, in the rack uh, VHF area, we'll probably have a high score, but no. We didn't really, it was a last minute thing that didn't come in, and we didn't really, um, how can I say, organize using the rack call sign. It was available, nobody else grabbed it because not a lot of people worked the winter day contest, right? Especially uh, uh, with that. So, um, you know, it was sitting there rather than sitting and not getting on the air. I said, well, we'll take it and we'll use it to whatever capacity that we can. So, all right. Well, just excellent. Think, just Yep. Just in case, oh. just sorry, Al, just in case anybody's interested, the American Radio Relay League uh, VHF contest is next weekend. If anyone is interested, uh, they they run a, a rock contest in the winter time in January, and then they run another rock contest when they should run a rock contest in June, uh, when the skip conditions are at their best. And Igor has sent out some. Uh, information and some charts about the uh, propagation conditions for various months and uh, June and part of July were probably the best if I remember correctly so and yeah, it's right. and it's and it's something I was talking to the VHF boys down south and one of them did mention to me he said you know uh, ARRL has had a, a VHF contest since uh, 1955 or something every year and he said maybe one day Iraq could have a VHF contest you know in June sometime uh, if, if uh, it could get organized you know and I was thinking you know it would probably be a good idea and the other mention I mentioned with Dana who writes the six meter column in Iraq is it would be nice if, if someone would uh, make a small list of where you could buy uh, radio equipment for VHF and UHF, uh, you know, the different transceivers and the different amplifiers and the different antennas. And Dana wrote me back and said, you know, you're absolutely correct. We haven't done it for a number of years. So 
I think in one of the future issues of uh, the Rack magazine, for those that are interested, uh, there'll be a, a feature there where he'll be able, he will tell you where to buy, where you can buy a VHF and UHF equipment, which would certainly be a help for, especially for a guy like me, you know. Absolutely. Well, good point, Pat. And yes, uh, Igor did send me um, uh, an email to your concerns with it. And now as you as the new uh, Northern and Eastern director and myself as uh, VP for RAC, this is something that we should certainly bring up and uh, see if we can't uh, uh, go to the contest committee and see if we can't get something organized and uh, maybe do a VHF uh, component. Uh, with the contests and see the probability. I think, and uh, Igor had an excellent point, um, our club wouldn't have a clue, right, on the VHF contesting and that if it weren't for Igor uh, giving us uh, the, the the information and uh, the training in regards to the propagation and using the DX map and all these uh, individual uh, things. And this is maybe something that could be done on a national level of uh, training because there's probably a lot, of, a lot of other people that would be interested in doing the VHF but don't have a clue how to go about it or how to use it or, or anything so there hasn't really been that demand of amateurs banging on Rack's door and saying why don't you have a VHF contest because... And don't tell the competition. And, 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 and the, inter <laughs> yeah. the, the interesting point now is I just got a note from uh, an email from Dana yeah, uh, the the Southern Ontario group down there, VHF, and I believe uh, our new president has joined the group. Apparently, so I, well, I'm, this I'm, is I'm sure there'd be some interest, you know. Absolutely, this is what uh, Phil and myself, and hopefully you as a new director and everybody, we want to move Rack in a more productive role than what it's been doing in the past, and bringing some of these new techniques. Uh, to uh, the front to let amateurs know and a lot in the digital mode like as I uh, mentioned uh, for years and years it was all the old contesters doing the traditional roles which is great and RAC definitely needs that but when I were to bring up something like uh, well let's have an article on D-Star or bring um, DMR to everybody looked around the table and said what the hell is that you know, and those are our executive people from RAC that don't have a clue on the, on the uh, the new uh, you know technologies that are coming out. So uh, this is why uh, you know Phil and I have got a lot of good ideas that hopefully will take place, and I think under uh, Phil's leadership uh, we'll be able to uh, push some of these things forward and uh, and go from there. So absolutely. <laughs> 